I'm with Fadi al Zugbi from the House of Bread Church in Bethlehem. Now, Fadi, when was the church founded? Well, the uh, ministry was founded probably in the uh, 1970s. I'll give you uh, a short background of the uh, history of the church. My dad used to be uh, a science and mathematics teacher. He accepted the Lord Jesus when he was 15 years old. He was uh, filled with the Holy Spirit in his 20s. Uh, later on, uh, the Lord called him to uh, minister. So he started to do uh, ministry. He had uh, first he started a uh, one room center where he had uh, audio visuals and also some tracts. Uh, and the ministry back then was called Bethlehem Tracts uh, because my dad used to uh, uh, hand out tracts to people to let them know about the Lord Jesus. And then the church itself started in 1994. Uh, and then the uh, the Lord gave uh, the Lord gave us a name House of Bread, which is the meaning of Bethlehem, mm. because um, usually in the past, why did they call it Bethlehem? Uh, people used to uh, raise wheat and thus made make bread. So from a natural sense, it was uh, fruitful with wheat and bread. But then from a spiritual sense, Jesus Himself said, "I am the bread of life." So basically, uh, bread is very important uh, on every meal. And in the same way, Jesus is important to us always. So that's why where the name House of Bread comes from. Now you're very close to the area where Jesus was born. How big is your church? Yeah, well, our congregation is uh, small. We have about uh, 40 members, including uh, adults, young adults, um, children, and uh, elderly people. And what sort of projects do you do here in the church? Well, basically we have children's ministry. Yesterday we uh, took the kids to a nearby garden where they had uh, some good time with the Bible story about resurrection. Uh, so we have children's ministry. We have also uh, youth ministry. We have young adult ministry. In addition to uh, Bible studies that we do at home, uh, in addition to that, we just are uh, we we are open to uh, whatever the Lord uh, opens up uh, something to do. And what is your mission here to the people of Bethlehem? Well, basically, uh, I can sum it up in uh, two things. The uh, first thing is that to uh, let people love the Lord their God with all of their hearts, soul, and mind, and of course, uh, loving others as as themselves. And the second one is that to uh, let them do what God requires them to do. Because it's uh, one thing to uh, be a faithful, a de dedicated follower of the Lord Jesus, and it's another thing to do His will. So basically, uh, teaching people how to love God and to do His will. And uh, what difficulties do you face as a church here in Bethlehem? Well, the uh, political situation affects us in a, in a negative way. Uh, for example, we, uh, we are not able uh, or free to move uh, from Bethlehem to Jerusalem. Uh, people have to have permission to uh, move. This year, uh, mo some of the Christians got about two months permission for the Easter. So they were able to go back and forth to Jerusalem. So uh, the one of the problems is that the uh, freedom of movement. In the past, I remember when I used to be a kid, uh, we would go to Jerusalem freely. But nowadays, with the checkpoint and with the wall that surrounds Bethlehem, it's making it uh, problematic for the people to come and go, especially for the youngsters. They are stuck mainly in Bethlehem. Uh, sometimes uh, we say we are stuck in a big prison. Mm -hmm. So uh, being confined to one place is uh, one of the challenges that we face. But you know, as uh, Apostle Paul said, we are prisoners for the Lord Jesus Christ. So in this difficult situation, uh, we try to be taught not to complain, but also but to uh, pray uh, to the Lord so that the situation will be better. I know that uh, it's not, um, I hope that the situation will get better, but it seems that every day it's uh, being worse. 
It must be difficult as a pastor encouraging your congregation when you're actually going through those same very difficulties yourself. Yeah, really. Uh, I remember the uh, story of uh, King David when uh, he was, well, he was not yet a king, uh, but he was one of the leaders in his community. And uh, there was a challenge that uh, some of the invaders came and took away the possessions and the people. Uh, and then the uh, followers of David came to him and started to blame David for what happened. So uh, there is a nice verse that I like that says, uh, and David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. So uh, basically, uh, before David wanted to uh, do his mission, he first encouraged himself in the uh, in God. So uh, what we do here, of course, uh, I we always encourage ourselves with the Word of God uh, through spending time with the Lord uh, in uh, whether it's. Uh, reading his word or reading spiritual books or listening to music or listening to uh, programs that build our faith. So basically, uh, we uh, uh, get our uh, strength from the Lord and then uh, we share what the Lord has comforted us because it's uh, what uh, Apostle Paul said uh, in his epistle to the Corinthians, praise be to God who um, strengthens us, who comforts us, and then we are able to comfort others. So basically, we get our nourishment from the Lord and then share it with others. Now, there is a lot of youth here in Bethlehem. What difficulties does the Christian youth face and what temptations are there here in Bethlehem for them? Well, you know, uh, basically, uh, there are uh, a few of them. Uh, one of them is uh, despair. One of them uh, is that they don't see hope living here. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, atmosphere, the uh, conflict that we live in the midst of it, uh, since uh, sends some kind of uh, difficulty or despair in the, to the life of the youngsters. Uh, so basically, uh, they uh, they try they uh, don't have any kind of hope towards the future. Uh, that's one thing. And of course, the um, another thing is that, uh, as the scripture says that. Um, as Christians, we have uh, uh, some challenges in life, such as the pride of life, the uh, lust of the eye, and the lust of the flesh. So basically, uh, these are some of the uh, uh, temptations that people have to uh, overcome because Jesus said, uh, if you do sin, you would uh, be uh, a slave for sin. But if the sun set you free, you are free indeed. So basically, probably as human beings, they face the uh, challenge of uh, uh, the uh, challenges of uh, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye. Um, so probably uh, trying to uh, teach them how to be devoted be people to the Lord, to teach them that Jesus Christ gives the freedom and to walk in holiness with the Lord. Now, there's Christian families here in Bethlehem. Many Christian families are leaving. Uh, are there many Christian families here in Bethlehem who are living in poverty? Yes, there are uh, many people that live in poverty. Uh, the uh, life here is very expensive. Uh, people have to uh, pay so many bills, such as electricity bill, telephone bill, um, water bills and these bills are expensive in addition to the taxes that we uh, pay for these bills uh, food is expensive uh, uh, gas is expensive so everything is so expensive here and the income is very low it's not that high uh, so there are uh, so many people who live in poverty yet um, as uh, I'm reminded of uh, one of the verses or one of the questions that Jesus asked his disciples. He said, uh, when I send you without a shoe and without a food, did you lack anything? The disciples said, no. So basically, uh, when Jesus was, was with his disciples, the Lord was able to provide for them. And even when the, in another story in the Bible, when the one of the women uh, who did not have uh, some flour and oil, but the prophet Elijah told her that the Lord will be able to provide for you. So 
we are encouraged really by the word of God that amidst of the poverty, amidst of the needs that the Lord is able to provide. And as King David said, I have been a child and now I am an adult. I have not seen uh, a person, a righteous person who lacks food. Now, is the Bethlehem Church a healthy church today, do you think? Well, basically, I would say uh, uh, yes and no. I would say uh, yes because uh, there are uh, committed and dedicated Christians who make up the uh, Church of Bethlehem. There are Christians who would like who uh, love the Lord with their hearts and minds and strength. And on the other hand, I don't deny that there are some uh, challenges in the church. Uh, there are some things to overcome. Uh, so uh, it's probably uh, a growing uh, a, a growing time. So I, I hope really that uh, this uh, health will, Im will improve because basically we're looking at the quality of people probably rather than quantity. Yes, God wants a good number and a good quality, but to begin with, with the priority is uh, quality Christians and what's your prayer for the Christian community here in Bethlehem well basically I pray that uh, so many people will uh, two things so many people to walk with the Lord to walk in the narrow path rather than walking in the wide path because it's uh, very tempting to walk in the way of the world in the wide uh, path that leads to destruction. Uh, so my prayer that many people will uh, make a U-turn or they will uh, come back, they will exit to come back to walk with the Lord in the narrow path, which eventually leads to uh, eternal life. Uh, so that w that's the uh, first hope. And the second hope is that I would like to see uh, youngsters, youth, adults, um, any uh, age, uh, to do what God requires requires them to do. Because as Christians, if we uh, accepted the Lord Jesus and if we walked with Him, we have a responsibility to tell others about God. Uh, one time I read a Chinese maxim that says, if you knew something valuable, you have a moral obligation to share this with others. So uh, as Christians, uh, we have an obligation to share the good news of others. God was gracious enough to reach out to us with the message of salvation and we have to uh, share this message with others. So uh, to sum up the uh, second hope is that I hope that uh, many people will uh, share the good news with others. Now you have a website with your church details and also you have a guest house here. What's your website address? The address of the website is www.h o bcm dot palvision dot net h o b c m stands for house of bread church ministry then dot palvision dot net okay fadi thank you very much my pleasure and may the lord bless the listeners and be with you and may god's face shine upon you uh, to uh, so that you will be the person that god wants you to be